Welcome to Little Known Black History Facts. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. The Edmondson Sisters, Escape on the Pearl. The Edmondson Sisters were the daughters of Paul and Amelia Edmondson, a free black man and an enslaved woman. Mary and Emily Edmondson were enslaved African Americans who became prominent in the United States abolitionist movement after gaining their freedom. They were among 77 slaves who tried to escape from Washington, D.C. to New Jersey on the schooner named the Pearl. Paul Edmondson, along with Paul Jennings, both freedmen, plotted the escape with the help of Captain Daniel Drayton, an abolitionist who had helped a slave family escape D.C. by boat to New Jersey the previous year before. For the larger escape, Drayton chartered the Pearl, which was owned and captained by Edward Sayers. On April 15, 1848, the sisters and four of their brothers joined 71 other slaves on the Pearl in what was the largest escape attempt by enslaved people in United States history. Word about the Pearl had spread quickly among the free and enslaved blacks, and what began as an attempt to help the sisters, their brothers, and one other enslaved person to escape became a major operation. In the largest escape attempt ever, the plan was to sail the Pearl down the Potomac River and up the Chesapeake Bay to the Delaware River to freedom in New Jersey, a total of 225 miles. These enslaved people belonged to 41 of the most prominent families in Washington, D.C. and Georgetown and were valued at $100,000, equivalent to $2.3 million today. In Washington, D.C., an informant betrayed the escapees, and the alarm was raised the next morning as numerous slaveholders found their enslaved people had escaped. Judson Diggs was an enslaved black man who had betrayed the fugitives. Diggs had driven a participant in the escape to the dock and accepted the fugitive's promise of future payment. However, Diggs reported the suspicious activity. Justin Diggs, one of their own people, a man who should have sympathized with their effort, took upon himself the role of a Judas. The Pearl began its way down the Potomac, but the voyage was delayed overnight by the shift in tides and then squalls kept them from entering Chesapeake Bay. A passing steamer's captain thought the Pearl looked suspicious and reported it to the authorities. The schooner and the escapees made it all the way to the mouth of the Potomac before they were caught and returned to Washington, D.C. Overpowered, the freedom seekers surrendered without a fight and awaited their new fate. Their new fate was what many freedom seekers feared most, being separated from their family and sold in the Deep South. Once back in Washington, D.C., the Edmondson sisters and the other 75 freedom seekers were walked through an angry mob of pro-slavery protesters who anticipated their arrival. While in jail, the sisters were separated from their brothers. Slave dealer Joseph Bruin purchased many of the slaves who were unsuccessful in their bid for freedom aboard the schooner Pearl, including the Edmondson sisters. Bruin used a large brick, federal-style brick house at 1707 Duke Street in Alexandria, Virginia as headquarters for his slave trading operation. Another structure behind the house was a holding facility for slaves who had yet not been sold. Bruin shipped them to New Orleans, where they would have likely been forced into prostitution. However, Bruin brought the sisters back to Alexandria after an outbreak of yellow fever to protect his investment. Mary and Emily's father, Paul Edmondson, began a campaign to free his daughters. Edmondson traveled to New York and visited the members of the Anti-Slavery Society, who advised him to take his plea to the Reverend Henry Ward Beecher, pastor of the Plymouth Church in Brooklyn, New York. Beecher was also an abolitionist, and he convinced members of his church to raise the funds required to purchase the Edmondson sisters and free them. Reverend Beecher's church members in Brooklyn raised the necessary funds and Paul Edmondson hurried back to Washington to purchase the girls' freedom before they were returned to New Orleans. Mary and Emily Edmondson were emancipated on November 4, 1848 and their families gathered in Washington to celebrate the event. The Brooklyn church continued to contribute money to send the sisters to school. While studying at Cortland College, the girls participated in anti-slavery rallies throughout the New York State. In August 1850, both sisters attended the Slave Law Convention to protest the Fugitive Slave Act, which was soon to be passed by Congress. 
Under this act, slave owners had unlimited powers to arrest fugitive slaves in the North and return them to slavery in the South. The convention, led by Frederick Douglass, declared all slaves to be prisoners of war. Mary Edmondson died of tuberculosis at the age of 20. Emily continued to work in the abolitionist movement. In 2010, the city of Alexandria installed a sculpture of the Edmondson sisters at 1701 Duke Street. The statue is very near to the site where they were held in Bruin slave pens before they were sold to New Orleans. Until next time, please like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Press the bell to be notified of future uploads. Thank you for watching.